Hello, I'm Philip Goad. I'm Professor of Architecture here in the Melbourne School of Design at the University of Melbourne. Architecture is one of those wonderful things to teach because building and designing is one of those great optimistic activities and so architecture I think is just a fantastic thing to be teaching and to take students out to see what's being built around us. I guess I always am excited by seeing buildings which excite me and so um, I have a passion for buildings and in particular houses and I never cease to be amazed at how excited I am going to see in particular really fabulous recent Australian houses and uh, in particular those of the post-war period. I think the post-war period was really interesting because it was a time, this is the war, the war years, were essentially times of great hardship, rationing, shortages of of building materials, shortages of labour and the like. And because of that, after the war, there was an incredible sense of optimism and I think a capacity of sort of can do and experiment. And in the architectural world, this meant that young architects were free to experiment with exciting new shapes and in particular, exciting new ways of actually describing how a family might live in the suburbs. At the same time, you have the rise of speculative home builders who are also interested in taking advantage of mechanised building techniques, uh, new materials and so on. So it's, it's a really exciting time and uh, a number of us have talked about it being an unfinished experiment, that there are so many things that were going on in the 50s that, that we haven't taken advantage of. And I think what is quite extraordinary about that post-war period is that many of the things like plenty of natural sunlight, uh, the open plan, uh, have continuing relevance. And also too, at that time, you had very exciting things like paint companies developing a whole new range of paint colours and people being, if you like, after World War II, being prepared to embrace things like uh, sunlight and outdoor living. Well, if we describe the style of the post-war architect-designed house, uh, the flat roof was all the rage, or the butterfly roof, or the skillion roof. And this was a radical uh, challenge, if you like, to the dominance of the hipped roof, the hip terracotta tile roof. And because after World War II there was a shortage of building, building materials like brick and clay, uh, it meant that there was a justified release for not having to use uh, brick or terracotta tiles. And so you tended to have uh, expansive areas of glass, uh, unadorned wall surfaces, bright colours and flat roofs. It was really the house moving into ideas of abstraction and another and different new images for what the house might look like. In a city like Melbourne uh, you had wonderful uh, opportunity to build these new houses in new subdivisions. In places like Beaumaris, uh, Moorabbin, uh, you do a sort of c circumference uh, around Melbourne, Ringwood, Box Hill, uh, uh, particularly in the eastern suburbs and suburbs like um, North Baldwin, Bulleen as well are the great sort of post-war um, expansion areas for suburbs. I think uh, the influence in that post-war growth of subdivisions was uh, that it was accompanied by the building of new schools, new kindergartens. Uh, previously, um, if you sent your children to kindergarten in the 30s, you were not terribly well off. So the whole rise of the middle class community building, like the kindergarten, the local swimming pool, uh, to a degree the maternal health and welfare centre, had an enormous expansion, the local library uh, after, the world, after World War II. And uh, so those, if you like, new civic buildings uh, accompanied these post-war expansion of the suburbs. And it was a pretty exciting time, and in particular in the 60s when Australia is more affluent, then these Post-war houses expand in size. You have the addition of the rumpus room, the playroom, uh, the idea of the ensuite is something that, that parents can now afford and want. The TV room became part of everyday, everyday living, as opposed to immediately after the war, where there were house restrictions, where there were restric restrictions on house size until until 1952. You couldn't build a house above 10 or 12 squares. 
So as the 50s progressed, as Australia became richer and into the 60s, you have this growth of material culture. Chadston gets built in 1962. Uh, the growth of these suburban shopping centres as well aids this incredible suburban expansion.